Hey, Walter Sorrells back with another Knife Makers Friday Five. Today, new developments around the shop, new knives, and viewer questions. So today I'll be answering a couple of viewer questions, but first, developments around the shop. Uh, it's 11 degrees in the shop today, so that's super fun. Welcome to sunny Georgia. I'm shooting in this nasty room because it is the warmest place uh, in the shop. Normally, I never shoot in here. The light's terrible. There's grinder dust everywhere, but today, sucking it up and doing it here. Anyway, I guess I'll launch today's episode by mentioning my plan for the new year, which is to really focus on my Tactics Armory blades. Uh, anyway, I'll get into a little more detail about what all that means in another video, but the bottom line is that I'm going to be producing a bunch of new semi-production knives this year, um, and so right now I'm working on the second of my new designs. Uh, this is a little neck knife. The first one was the Nightfall that I brought out a couple months ago, but this is what I'm focusing on right now. Haven't named this one yet or anything, but uh, the first prototype is the one that I've got in my hand here. The final version will not be like this at all, but uh, it's moving in the right direction anyway. So the basic idea for this particular knife, you know, I know that there are a lot of guys who'd like to pick up one of my knives, but they'd like something that's a slightly, uh, you know, a slightly lower price point than most of my knives. So I'm working on this little neck knife that's designed to be kind of cool and kind of interesting, but a little friendlier to the wallet. Keep an eye out on the channel for more information about it because it's not going to look exactly like this in the end. Um, just quickly, uh, the idea for this year is to use CNC machining to produce some I guess you'd say kind of modular designs so that I can do simpler versions, more complicated versions, interchangeable handles, uh, maybe different kinds of steel. So maybe some in carbon steel or maybe even Damascus steel. And then us the usual kind of high quality stainless steels that I normally use for my tactics armory knives. So in that spirit, this little neck knife is going to start out as a really basic skeleton kind of configuration to keep it, like I said, at a low price point. Then I'll make ones with different handle scales, more elaborate designs, that sort of thing as the year goes on. A couple quick notes about some upcoming videos. I'm going to be doing a video next week about knife design. I'll be talking specifically about the little neck knife that I showed earlier, but the idea is just to talk about the kind of things that a knife maker has to think about when they're designing a knife. You'll be totally surprised. There's a lot of stuff that you have to consider, you know, that comes into play when you're designing a knife that really doesn't have anything to do with the things that you would normally think, oh, that's what a knife maker thinks about when they're designing a knife. Lots of stuff about the making side of it, in other words. Also, now, you know, I said that I'm going to be focusing on tactics armory production knives this year, but I've actually been doing a whole bunch of Japanese sword related stuff which for those of you who haven't followed my trajectory as a knife maker is really where I got started 25 years ago, uh, if you can believe that. Anyway, uh, I'm hoping to incorporate some of that into a fun little video, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, let's go to the meat of things here and answer a couple of excellent viewer questions. Okay, so first question is from a viewer named Travis Kirk. I'm currently working on my second dagger. This will officially be my seventh knife build ever. Let's just say I'd probably have 10 to 12 knives under my belt if I hadn't derailed and catastrophically foobarred all my time and effort because of the shaping and blending of handle material to guard and the rest of the handle work. So honestly, I just suck at shaping the handle. Now he sent me a couple of pictures and for early knives, these are really pretty nice looking knives. So kudos to him. But Obviously, he wants to make them better. I just don't understand why. What is it that I'm not doing that I can't get the materials to match up well? I just can't get the flow of the handle to look aesthetically pleasing, and I can't get the shape to feel ergonomic. So I do have a video about, the, about you know handle shaping, and I'd encourage you to go dig that up if this is something that you're interested in. But there are a couple things that I would say about handles. The first is that you have to think about it sort of in chunks. 
if you take a handle and just try and do the whole thing all at once, it, it, it's just easy to go too far in this direction and not far enough. So what I like to do is knock the corners off of all the sharp parts of the, of the handle or the square parts of the handle, all the corners. So I go 45 degrees on a, a flat platen and then sort of maybe 60 and 60. So I start rounding it off, but using big old facets. Once I get that basic kind of feel of, okay, now it's not just got a bunch of square corners. The next step that I do is I go from, well, I don't have my flat platen on here, but I typically do it on a flat platen and then I go to a slack belt fixture. I would also mention that a super important part of it is to use the right belts. When I'm doing my bevels or when I'm doing foundation grinding or whatever, I want to use a real hard, what's known as an X weight belt, which means it has a very hard uh, back. But when I'm doing shaping type things where I'm blending lines and I'm trying to get something that's real soft looking, I'm going to turn to J weight belts, which are much softer and kind of floppier and you can really push them around. And so especially on a slack belt setup, they're just going to give you much softer, easier blending. And so I'm, I'm trying to, when I'm grinding, I'm just moving it, moving it, moving it. So I never rest in one place. I never do just straight lines like this. I'm always moving and trying to blend and use the softness of those J-weight belts. So if you give that a try, try out those J-weight belts on a slack belt fixture and it'll really help out your handles, really give them a much nicer, softer, more ergonomic feeling. Real quick here, guys, if you've been enjoying all the free content I've been offering on YouTube for the past 15 years, yep, you heard that right. It's been almost 15 years now, and you want to give back to the channel, there's a way. It's called Patreon. All my Patreon supporters at any pledge level get plans to most of my builds, you know, knives, knife making tools, all that stuff that I make on here. But more than that, you get the satisfaction of supporting something that you believe in and that helps you. So help me help you. Link in the cards and description. Thanks guys, and now back to work. Okay, so viewer question number two from Mark Silliman. Hi Walter, I uh, hope you're well. I just did a final tempering on two blades. My first one turned a nice bronze color, but the smaller one turned blue, purple, and black. I understand it got too hot, but I'm wondering if it can be retempered properly. And he says that he actually did his tempering in a gas grill. It got up over 500 degrees and it kind of got away from him. So the basic deal is once you harden a knife, you have to temper it, which means going to a lower, but still pretty toasty kind of temperature and soften up the steel just a little bit. There's kind of a narrow range of temperatures for any given steel that's going to be effective. And if you exceed that temperature range, you really sort of have to start all over. It's going to soften up the blade too much. So the, unfortunately, Mark, the short answer is here, yeah, you're going to have to redo the hardening on that blade. The good news is that's not disastrous. You just go back, you repeat the quenching of the blade, heat it up to 1500 degrees or whatever is appropriate for that particular steel, quench it however, again that's dependent on the steel, and then go back and temper it again. All is well, everything should work out fine. All right guys, thanks for stopping by my extremely cold shop. Hopefully next time you come here it's going to be a little warmer. See you soon and keep on making those knives. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. 
Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com